Saturday night, Mike Tyson defends his heavyweight boxing title against former champ Evander Holyfield. It's a match that will be seen on Showtime pay-per-view. Uh, no one has been predicting that the fight will go the full 12 rounds, but we can say that Tyson went the distance with Roseanne. On Thursday, a special inside edition. Two of the nation's biggest names in a way you've never seen them with access like you've never seen. Roseanne goes one-on-one -on -one with Iron Mike. Okay, we're going to Mike Tyson's house. It's really awesome. In the, in the desert here, look at what we got. Look at this door. Look at that door. Crystal handles. It looks like they're angels, sort of. Kind of angels. Maybe that's for protection or something. Let's go. Let's go see. <gasps> Look at that rug. That is so beautiful. Oh, and a fountain right, right in your entry. And, and look at all those lions. There's two lions up there, too. Look at this. It's so incredible. Tell us who this is. All right. This is, um... I was wrong. I said Napoleon. I was wrong. Yes. This is a, a gentleman by the name Jean Francisco Dessaline. He was a, a Haitian revolutionary when they were fighting against France for actually around 1802, around that period of time, when they regained their independence. It was around 1802. And this is Alexander the Great. Oh. Um, this is um, Hannibal. And this is Genghis Khan. Genghis Khan, oh. the Mongolian chief. Yeah. So, are they guarding your pool? No, I just, <laughs> I just, um, I just enjoy, enjoy the history. Of it. But also, like when you put like the symbol of something, you're kind of, you're kind of calling its energy to be there too. I would say so. Yeah. The most, all these men were fierce warriors, fierce and merciless. I like that. I made this right here. This is like a little, what do you call it, a moat. Like you see, in England, they had the little moat. I wanted a moat in front of my house, too. It's a, you, got, you have a lot of symbols of protection around you. Moats and stuff. You got to put alligators in there, though. I need to be protected. It's a yeah. cruel world out here. Yeah. I hang out here all day and just, you know, just watch the tiger run around. Do you, you don't have any, like, mental kind of thing that, can you look at her a certain well, way to scare now, her? Now, like, she charged me, um, I, and she stopped. Oh, sometimes I see she's ready to charge, I'll charge her right away. I guess the reverse, I charge her and she'll run. And just, it's gotta be a mind game because okay. um, physically I don't stand a chance. When they're too big, she's still a baby, she's 220 pounds. She got another 110 pounds to go. Then what are you gonna do? Um, just keep her and breed her. I wanna have children with her. I, I heard you talking about that, about being in the ring, too. You know, we just watch you do what you do in the ring. But, well, we sort of think, we bring our own mythology to it because, like, for me, it was like, um, well, Mike, he had a really tough childhood, like the toughest, the toughest stuff happened to him. And then he was given, like, this one door to go through to save himself, and he went through that, and that's, you know, but he brings all that passion, all that pain, all that anger about going through that door with him into the ring. But then you said, this blew my mind, that you go, well, I can't have any feelings of rage or positive. I can't feel anything in there because I'm p pretty much pure technology. Yeah, true. That's, that's amazing. I, I can't stand that. I can't understand you know, it's it. It's so ironic because, you know, a lot of people say the person that works off passion, that fights with passion, that works with passion, is the best person they do with their feelings and emotions. One day, they may not feel that feeling. And sometimes you're working with your passion and you're involved emotionally with something, and then you may see something or something may happen, and that emotion has changed on matter because it's responding That's to true. that feeling. And then you no longer can perform at the, uh, the uh, pinnacle of your, of your feet. And that's how I always think it's to be unemotional when you handle a situation because you can't be disturbed by anything because there's no emotion involved. You can't feel sorrow, you can't feel pity. It's nothing you feel, so the job has to be done. Roseanne, this is a new gig for you. How come you decided to be a reporter? Um, well, basically because I thought it would be great to see somebody talk to somebody else and afford them you know, their dignity rather than try to take it away. So that's why I thought I'd be about the best reporter there is because I have dignity and I would afford it to somebody else, which I did with Mike and his comes through. Rather than the usual way I get uh, interviewed, which is like ambush, take away, 
bad, bad, bad. Well, this I wanted is, to try it the other way. This is good, 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 and we look forward to Thank more you of very it much. on Thursday. You, a real special Inside Edition. Thank you, Roseanne. Coming up on Inside Edition. Is home to Roseanne for a revealing exchange between two people accustomed to the glare of publicity. Today we devote our program to one of the more candid interviews you're ever likely to see. What's that? Hey. Good. Looking good. Two of the heaviest hitters in the country, Mike Tyson and Roseanne, came together for an incredible rendezvous and Inside Edition was there. As Iron Mike trained in Las Vegas, we got a first-hand peek at the toughest man in the world. And our tour guide was none other than Roseanne, the undisputed champ of prime time. They're going to be shocked and amazed when they see I you. I believe that's true. Uh, listen, it's, it's When brilliant. they see me... Uh boxing with Mike. Oh, They're it's going to be, be great. It's While Roseanne has had many roles in her career, this is her first shot as interviewer. And Mike Tyson was thrilled to be her first subject, allowing her a glimpse into his very private life. First stop on the tour, Mike's Las Vegas house. The Tyson Mansion sprawls over 11,000 square feet and cost over $5 million. <gasps> Look at that rug. That is so beautiful. The champ bought the home shortly after his release from prison in 1995. Evidence of his jailhouse conversion to Islam is everywhere. I just wanted to have something there that represented what I really believed in. And Roseanne met the resident house cat. I look cool though, don't I? A rare white Bengal tiger named okay. Kenya. One minute they were looking and they may take a chunk at you, then 20 minutes later they may come and lick you. So you gotta be, you know, you have to be very cautious with them. Roseanne's snooping around in our kitchen. It's a very um, utilitarian kind of kitchen with no frills. Kind of like in a restaurant. Do you think we could look in his fridge? Yeah. Let's go see what he's really eating, because he's kind of in training a little. Oh, Coke and Diet Coke and water. That's great. Oh, it's just pretty cool. Pretty cool. Coffee mate light. Is it diet dressings or no, they're all fat. That's good. And a fireplace thing, that's neat. Grilling, grilling chicken or steaks, I can. Fat fires, uh-uh, just like at McDonald's, look it. We can make his own french fries. But Roseanne didn't come to Las Vegas just to look around. She came to do what she does best, talk. She brought out a side of the heavyweight champ we rarely see, and she opened up to Mike as well. You know, when I was being a waitress, I'd be like, they go like, how much is it? I, go, I bring the tray of drinks, and I'm like, Okay, it's uh, seven dollars for a drink, another three bucks for me to take it out of the tray and give it to you. You know, that I pocket that money, and that's how I got really good tips, and they're like, you're funny, you're funny. At the heart of this meeting was something both the comedian and the pugilist hold dearest, their pride in their kids. How many kids do you have? Two. Mike's newest child is his eight-month-old daughter, Raina. Raina's mother is Monica Turner, a recent graduate of Georgetown Medical School. Mom and the baby live in Maryland. I love her. It's just awesome. She looks like so much like you, too. She's awesome. Especially in the middle picture, she looks like She's you. She's awesome. Awesome to awesome. She's standing up. Holding on. And she says a word. Baby. She says, baby, and stop. <laughs> She's beautiful. So cute. Our family, you know, it's so ironic because my, my children would be the first um, generation of probably Tysons that weren't never on welfare or anything. And I always look at that as, and that's just, to me, other people may say, well, what do you expect? God, like, you make so much money and you do this thing, I suppose. But to me, that's a big thing. My son is 18, mm -hmm. and he's the first person in my entire family ever who graduated from high school. You know you will go through living hell when she's a teenager. Over all that, and she brings that guy home that you don't like, and you know she will do that. I miss, you know what I think? I'm just hoping that I don't have to kill him. Yeah. I always, I always think, I said, well, I hope I have to kill him. Like, me and her mother, we joke and laugh. I said, well, we just hope that we don't have to kill this guy. you got about 15 years, so you'll be 45. You'll be around my age when all this stuff is. I hope you still be in shape that you can, like, scare the guy. I was thinking about that, too. I hope there's going to have some young, no one has to bring some young 6'4 monks, a big guy 15 years old, yeah. 280, She's going to bring your worst nightmare right into your face. Yeah, that's like me. Your worst nightmare. Hi, Mr. Tyson, sir. Hi. 
It's a pleasure meeting you. I'm a great fan of yours, sir. When we come back, you may be surprised to see what Mike considers the most precious item in his home. And he talks with Roseanne about the heartache and lessons learned from his earlier relationships. You know you screw over your heart, that you give your heart to somebody, and they take your heart and they put it on the ground and stomp it and stomp it and stomp it and just walk off. When Mike Tyson hits the ring this Saturday, in addition to the fans watching in Las Vegas, there will be thousands watching on pay-per-view. Given his history of abbreviated matches, Cablevision is offering viewers the chance to pay for the fight on a per-round basis. Tyson's last bout ended after 109 seconds. It is estimated that Tyson will take home $30 million from this bout, which will keep him in the style to which he's become accustomed. <laughs> Right now, Mike Tyson is training to retain his title this Saturday night as the WBC heavyweight world champion. But it wasn't that long ago that he was doing his fighting on the streets of Brooklyn. His trainer, Jay Bright, remembers with Roseanne. He was a street kid. He had uh, layers of callousness and street. Uh, I mean, Mike came from a neighborhood where it was kill or be killed. Tyson was in and out of trouble with the law for all kinds of offenses like armed robbery. But with the help of legendary manager Customato, Mike Tyson was soon winning title after title. And down he goes. When they call you, quit my Mike Tyson, make Mike Tyson happy money. Yes, make him happy money. Today, the champ is used to shopping for baubles at ritzy shops like Johnny Versace at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas with pals like Roseanne and his flamboyant fight promoter Don King, while fans clamor at the door for a glimpse. Roseanne, Roseanne, with every wave rippling out to sea, you know what I mean? It comes in and plants a kiss on the shore. Roseanne. Rose Ann, beautiful, beautiful, voluptuous, sensuous, yes, curvaceous. Hi, Monica, love you, Monica. Beautiful. It is great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, what a team. When Mike left, the fans barely let him move. They're so hungry for an autograph or to pose for a picture. But to Roseanne, Iron Mike seems much more comfortable when he's playing with his oh action God, dolls in his bedroom. Now, this is the X-Men. This is what I'm into. Now, this is what I love to do. This is so awesome. I, I'm going to tell you something. I have 150 dolls in my office that I play with. I collect pillows. Pillows and X-Men. See, the X-Men are mutants. Oh. And they get, they're born with strange abilities. Yeah. Like this guy's born, you know, I mean, perform strangely, but he has great power. He can run through brick walls. His name is Strong Guy. Look at his poor little head on that body. Well, how are they going to clash, or do they just look at each other? They just look at each other. Every now and then. Yeah. They don't go like this. No, every now and then. Yikes! Every now and then I may take this guy and just run through like that. <laughs> But on the same bedroom shelf where Tyson keeps his holy books of the Koran is the fighter's prized possession, his classic photo of Babe Ruth posing with black spectators in the 1920s. Isn't that an awesome picture? See those black people? Yes. In the 20s, they weren't allowed to go to white games. So that means that he went to a black game and played with black, black ball players or something. Because back in the 20s and 30s, they weren't allowed to even coexist at the same time where white people were at. So you mean you mean even 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 in the stands? No, they couldn't come to the stands in the twenties. And he came over there and somebody must have said, hey, hey babe, come over and take a picture. And he came over there and took a picture with the guy. But you know what? For a white guy to go next to these guys and take a picture, you know how much guts that took? Back in front of them to get that close to take a picture with them? Well, he had the guts. We knew that. A little footnote on baseball history. Most ballparks in the 20s did admit black fans, but the stands were strictly segregated. Today, Tyson is known as much for his rocky private life as he is for being a top prize fighter. Virtually every aspect of his world has constantly been under a microscope. Back in 1988, Tyson made headlines when he married actress Robin Givens. Just eight months later, the tumultuous relationship ended in divorce. It hurts. But then here we are, and I'm talking to you, you know, and we get to talk about stuff that we, nobody's ever, 
ever allowed to talk about sports. Now, seven years after his marriage fell apart, Tyson tells Roseanne that it's been tough for the strong man to handle heartbreak. And Roseanne can commiserate. Just two years ago, she was divorced and married her then bodyguard, Ben Thomas. When somebody is screw over your heart, that you give your heart to somebody, Betrayal, and they yeah. take your heart and they put it on the ground and they stomp it and right. stomp it and stomp it and you just walk off. Yeah. And as if you never existed. Right. And they use you to catapult them, catapult, excuse me, in a, in a life which they've never been accomplished with. And you do that to help them. You know, you right. help them. Right. You wanted to help them. You right. have to show appreciation for the love that you thought they were giving to you. Well, here's what I did, though. I think you did it too. Go ask yourself, why did I call that person into my life like that? Why did I call that to me? What was I supposed to learn? What am I going to never repeat? And then, like you kind of just watch, uh, they're gone. And it's Don't like, they make it hard for the next person in your life? Really? I w you would think that. Mm -hmm. For me, you, you would think that. Mm -hmm. But what I had going was, the worst and the best mm -hmm. at the same time as I had my bodyguard, you know, mm -hmm. that I'm married to and have the baby with. That was my bodyguard. So when the worst was going on, I had the best and I did have somebody mm -hmm. to go, please get over here in two minutes and get me out, you know, and he did. So I had the best and the worst at the same time. When we come back, both Roseanne and Mike talk about some of the most trying times in their lives. For Roseanne, it was the eight weeks she spent in bed before the birth of her youngest son. And Tyson talks about his toughest time, the time spent in prison after his rape conviction. I expect the worst to happen to me in life. I expect people to dump on me in life. I'm not going to allow it to happen. I'm going to fight all the way to the end. But if it happens, it's what I expect to happen. On the surface, it might seem surprising that Mike Tyson and Roseanne would find so much common ground. The fact is there are great similarities in their background. Both grew up poor, both fought hard for their success, and both have found they've had to pay a price for it. She's funny, she's exciting, she's intoxicating, she's beautiful. But about one year ago, Roseanne was going through one of the most turbulent times of her life. She was coming off a divorce, planning to marry her then bodyguard, Ben Thomas, and at the same time, she was pregnant with what she says was a test tube baby. Her dilemma... The worst stuff was coming out lawyer-wise when I was pregnant, but I was in bed on my back for eight weeks because I might lose that baby, you know. How could she fight for her divorce settlement and still stay calm enough to keep her baby? In my head, it was like, I have to stay calm to keep my baby. Now, am I going to choose the negative thing, fight, 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 like I've always fought? Or am I going to, like, choose to be calm for, to bring this baby that I want so much into the world? And I don't know how I did it. I, I do know how I did it. I did it with God. God did it through me. I was able to stay calm and let it all fall away. And if anyone's familiar with turmoil, it is certainly Tyson. He served three years in prison on a rape conviction. But as he tells Roseanne, while behind bars, he underwent a transformation. Once I grabbed um, Islam and I became spiritual, it's my whole life started changing. People who judge people by their actions, but only God can judge us by our heart, because he knows what's in our heart. Right, that is right. I just don't understand why we do stupid crap. In March 1995, Tyson was released from prison, and the Tyson camp still maintains his innocence. Never in a million years does the evidence prove that Mike Tyson did anything wrong to this young lady. And the whole case was entrapment, and it got completely taken out of the young lady and Mike's hands. He got wrong, I feel wrongly convicted, in my opinion, of something that he didn't do. But regardless of what, he paid a penalty for it. I, I but Mike Tyson trouble. remained stoic. Do you really think that I give a damn about somebody putting me in jail about something I believe in? I expect the worst to happen to me in life. I expect people to dump on me in life. I'm not going to allow it to happen. I'm going to fight all the way to the end. But if it happens, it's what I expect to happen. And when it does happen, I just deal with my situation. I mean, I'm, I'm not no um, church boy, and I'm not no saint, and I'm, I'm not no evil villain either. But they did tell you, all you have to do is say you're sorry, and we'll let you out, and you wouldn't do it. Well, by, by doing that, I'll continue to be locked up. I will continue emotionally locked up, spiritually to be locked up. Like, you know, I was in prison, but I was more free in prison than, than most of the people who were outside. You know what I mean? I knew who I was, and I knew who I was dealing with and what I was dealing with. 
When we come back, we're in the gym as Tyson gets ready for the fight that will net him millions. Hey! Today, it's been five years since Mike Tyson went to prison. Five years since a Tyson fight has gone more than five rounds. In fact, his last four fights have averaged four and a half minutes. That may be a reflection of the intensity of Tyson's workouts, or perhaps that strength is a reflection of the personal changes he's gone through. Fight time! Ten days in a wake up! The big fight against Evander Holyfield is coming up, and Mike Tyson is into some serious training. Not even Roseanne can break his concentration. You want some fries or anything? We want to... Oh, no, thank you. <laughs> Mike's on a training regimen that begins at 4 in the morning and can run until 8 o'clock at night. Even this close to the fight, Chief Trainer Jay Bright still puts Tyson through the paces, perfecting every punch. This is like a... Uh, uh, Ali Frazier. This is this is like an Ali Foreman. This will be one of Mike's toughest tests. But there was a time for Tyson when the chance to challenge the ghosts of Ali and Foreman seemed far away. This is only Tyson's fourth fight since March of last year, when he ended three years in prison. Now Mike opens up, and the right hand finally dumps him. He won all three previous fights, but the champ is still leery of the pitfalls of fame. We're from the gutter, and from the gutter, the only thing you know is the fight and the lives, so yeah. that's the easy part. The hard part is just staying up top and let's wee, 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 let's party on there and have a good time. That's the hard, you know, that's the hard part. But once we fall down and we have our backs against the wall, then no one fights as hard as us. And Tyson comes right out, right into Bruce Sheldon. You know, Hemingway once said that men are meant, they're not meant to be defeated, just destroyed. And I believe that. I believe that. And with Tyson's newfound religion, the fighter seems to have found peace within himself. It would have had me for 10 years. Nothing can discourage me. I refuse to be beaten. I refuse to lose in life. I'm Deborah Norville. We'll see you then. Okay, now it's hey, baby. <laughs>